Hey everyone, welcome back to CWL Builds. Today, I'll be showing you how I start my Robin costume. Now in a previous video that I'll link in the description, I created the templates for this and I'll be using those same templates that I created in that video to make this armor. So check that out if you haven't already. So in this video, I'll be covering how I built the shoulder plates as well as the 12 individual pieces that go over my stomach and my ribs. Now, sadly, and I'm sorry about this, but I didn't get the breastplate on video. I did whoever takes some photos. So those photos will come up in a few seconds and I'll talk about those as they come up. So this entire thing is made out of EVA film and ABS plastic. Now in a previous video, I did say I was going to make it out of PVC. Now it ended up being that PVC was significantly more expensive than ABS, which I guess I forgot about. So I decided that I would try ABS, you know, give it a try. I did find some downsides, but I'll talk about those later in the video. But everything else was pretty good about it. I'm not super mad about it. So here are the photos of the breastplate. Thanks for watching, guys. Here we go. So this is the bottom of the breastplate. This is ABS. That is clear acrylic. That is the robin part of it that goes on either side. That's half of it right there. That'll get glued on right there with super glue onto the bottom parts of the breastplate. Now the top part of the breastplate, I was going to make it ABS, but it ended up being too hard to form to shape, so I made it out of EVA foam. You can see that right there. The gray stuff on top of EVA, everything else is ABS and acrylic. And there it is with the R on it. That's made out of blue craft foam, as well as blue strips on top, just to give it a little decorative and cover those seams. And there it is painted and with some scratch marks and some bullet holes in it. I love that weathering. So now let's get started. So here is the first attempt I had at the breastplate. Now this was a conjoined breastplate at the middle. Didn't really like how it turned out. That white part on top really kind of threw it off for me. So I decided just to bust out the rest of it, the wings and the R, just to see how it would look. That was just a test run though. So that's the pieces that actually used right there. That's the EVA and ABS breastplate. So now I'm going to work on the shoulder pieces. So this is the template I made in a previous video. And for the shoulder pieces, I'm going to be using EVA foam. A thick craft foam and a thin craft foam. Now this thick stuff is thinner still than floor mats, but still thicker than the really thin craft foam that we're used to seeing. I get all this stuff at Michael's Craft Store. So there I am tracing it out. Make sure when you trace a pattern that's two-sided, that's symmetrical, that you flip the pattern over. Uh, this is especially important when your material you're working with has two different sides, maybe a side that's textured and a side that's not textured. In this case, it's not too big of a deal because both of these pieces have no texture on either side. But if I'm working with ABS or floor mats for EVA foam, those have texture on one side. So you have to be sure that you flip the pattern over to make it work right. So I'm just making sure everything fits there, cutting off a little excess. And I'll be using the heat gun to heat this up. This closes the foam cells and makes it a little easy to bend into shape. And here I am bending those into shape, giving it a little preliminary curve just to make sure everything goes together nice and is flexible. So there I do the other side and I'm gonna bend it into shape, make sure everything still fits together all nicely. And to attach these, I'll be using barge cement. Barge is a contact cement and I learned about it through the people at Punished Props, who are really cool people and I've learned a lot about crafting from them. So just use a very thin amount. You don't need a whole lot. This stuff will last you forever if you treat it right. And if you're gonna use a brush to put it on, make sure the brush is disposable because this stuff will ruin the brush. After it dries, there's no getting it off. So you put a very thin coat on either side that you're trying to attach. Wait five to 10 minutes. Once it's dry to the touch and is no longer shiny, you can put the two pieces together. Now, once they touch together, they're stuck for good. So make sure you do it very carefully. And there I am putting the last piece together. Now right now, it doesn't really look like a shoulder plate, right? It kind of looks more like a bowl of some type. So I heat it up with a heat gun, put it on my shoulder, and find the shape that I need. So there I am putting it on my shoulder, seeing how much of a curve it needs, and then I use my hands to give it the rest of the curve. So there I am curving it, letting it cool down. And now to cover up that nasty steam in the middle, I'll be using this thin craft foam. Now this is a really good technique to cover up seams in your EVA foam. You can make it look like a decorative piece or like rivets. 
There, I'm gonna use that sort of shape. And there I'm saying how long I need the piece to be by rolling the edge of the template down and then using a straight edge, in my case a piece of cardboard, because it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be similar, just to see how deep I need to go. And then I have an idea to use the side of the template as a sort of guide to get symmetrical edges. And then I cut that out with a sharp X-Acto knife, make sure it's sharp so that it doesn't drag and rip the foam. Making sure everything fits. I did cut this a little bit bigger than it should have been, but that's okay because I'll cut off the excess so that it sits flush on the edge of the armor. So before I glued on though, I do use it as a template to cut out the second piece. Then I use the heat gun to make everything a little more malleable and close the cells. There it is, I'm doing a little test fit. Looking good. Now what I should have done is not use super glue as you can see me using there. Super glue is kind of the cheap and fast way out of it. And really I should have used barge cement or any contact cement. The super glue ended up not really sticking well and the edges were popping up. So I had to do a lot of detail work and it ended up taking more time than it would have to let the barge dry. I was just impatient, so I, I kept it. I might redo these later, but for now it's okay. When I do the final weathering and paint job, it should cover everything up. There I am, gluing it on. I have to do a little bit of touch up work. As you can see there, I'm touching up the edges, making sure everything sticks. And then I take the sanding tool on my Dremel and I sand down the edges so it's no longer 90 degrees. Personally, I don't really like armor that has flat 90 degree angle edges. I think it looks unfinished and a little bit unnatural. So I always round the edges on my pieces, even the little edges on the thin craft foam that covers up the seam on my shoulder pieces. So there's the two of them, because of course I have two shoulders. Now I add these decorative sort of tacks and the little brass tacks that have round heads on them. So I put them in and then take them out, put a drop of super glue on the hole and then put them back in. Now these aren't structural at all, they just help with the look. And I do that on both. Here's another decorative piece I do. I take a silver sharpie and draw a line that sort of goes along with the decorative piece on top. And then using the very tip of my knife, I cut a very thin hole all the way across in a line. I'm not going all the way through, I'm just scoring the surface basically. Then when I heat it with a heat gun, the EVA expands open and leaves a really nice line through there. Now you can't see it right now, but when I plastic dip it right here, you'll be able to see those lines show up. And this is all optional, this is just a little extra detail that I like to add. Now comes the time to cut out all of those 12 pieces that go over my stomach and ribs. Now here's where I ran into my first problems with the ABS. ABS melts at a lower temperature than PVC. So when I was cutting it through, my saw would heat up the plastic so much that it would melt back to itself. And every time I cut off a piece, I had to basically break it in half in order to free the piece. So there it is cut out. I also ran into another problem here with sanding it on the disc sander. Because it melts so easily, the friction from the sander was melting the pieces. So I had to go very slow and take my time with this. And here I'm beveling these edges too. Again, like I said, I don't like 90 degree angles. So I beveled all the edges to give it a real nice natural look. Had to go slow on here too so it wouldn't melt the plastic. And here they all are, they're ready to be heat formed. But first I had to take off the little burrs on the edges. So I'm taking the side of my X-Acto knife and scraping it along the edges of my piece. And this just gets rid of any burrs or any melted pieces that might have been formed when sanding and cutting. And you can see all those little black strings, that's all from that. I'm just sanding it here with a sanding block. This gets it ready for paint and also cleans up everything even more. Here I am heat gunning it, and this is getting it ready for forming it to my body. Now I found here that ABS 
does take longer to heat up than PVC. Which I found was strange because it does have a lower melting point. But here I am, forming it to my body. This stuff is really hot, that's why I have to wear gloves. So I had to do 12 of these, so I'll just show a couple. This is me forming it, and you'll see here I use the back of my hand in a second to contour the piece because the back of my hand had a similar curve that I needed. So you can see right there I'm using it, pressing my hands together until it cools down enough that it's no longer malleable. There it is, you can see that curve there. It's a pretty strong curve. And there it is, it's all painted and sort of put together in a shape. So it's plasti dipped, it's weathered, I put some bullet holes, I put some sword marks, and there's that plasti dip. I do three to four coats usually, even over the ABS, which isn't required, you don't have to. It's really good for like EVA foam though, but I like the texture that it gives and I think it adds a nice little uniformity to all, have all black instead of starting with different colors. So yeah, so there's the bullet holes, you can see the sword marks, the strikes, just a little bit of weathering deeper weathering before I go in with painting. So I'm really happy how this turned out. I'm super excited to show you guys this. As of now, as of doing this force recording, I've painted it. Uh, you can check those out on my Instagram at CWLBuilds. I have some cool photos up there and I'll be updating those photos regularly as I paint more of my pieces. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying this sort of series of making my Robin costume. If you did like it, give it a like, let me know. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, put them in the comment section and I usually reply to everybody that I can. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I do have others on my channel. I will put those here. And if you wanna subscribe, I will have more Robin videos coming out in the future. I have to build his staff as well as the gauntlets and do some more painting, those might be videos. So stay tuned, you can subscribe by clicking the little button in the corner. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.